Back in about 51 BC, Julius Caesar wasn't making too many friends. And on March 15th, he was stabbed in the back by his buddy Brutus. His nephew Caesar Augustus was next in line and actually founded the Roman Empire. Now, as Emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus could get a little impatient. He would bark, Velocius quam asparagi cum quantur, or faster than cooking asparagus. It loosely translates as, get going already, which is exactly what I should do. It all makes sense today as we prepare chopped wild Pacific salmon with crispy potato wedges, and here it comes, olive oil and sea salt asparagus. So let's get going. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Caesar Augustus, founder of the Roman Empire, was such a connoisseur of asparagus, he would send his fastest runners to carry fresh spears right to him. Today we hail asparagus as we prepare chopped wild Pacific salmon with crispy potato wedges and olive oil and sea salt asparagus. Let's get started. I'm super excited about this recipe and it's really quick and easy to put together as long as you do it in the correct steps here. First thing that we want to do today is work on our crispy potato wedges. They're gonna take probably about 40 minutes or so in the oven, so we wanna get them started right away because the rest of the stuff comes together actually pretty quickly here. So we're just gonna wedge them up. I'm just kinda of cutting them on an angle so I get a nice little point at the tip. That's gonna help us get some of that, uh, get the, some of that crispy potato going on. Here we go. Do have this last one. And I'm simply gonna dress these potatoes today with fresh thyme, salt, and olive oil. Uh, so nice big bowl, dump these guys in there, you can see I'm using russet potatoes today because I want that sort of thicker skin to hold them together, helps get crispy too, and away, and away we go. Dress them with some olive oil, always use a nice good olive oil here when you're doing this, it actually does impart flavour, if you taste them side by side like olive oil and vegetable oil, you'll really see the difference. Okay, some salt, we all know potatoes love salt, give it a quick mix. I got some fresh thyme here. Now I want to pick some of the thyme off the stems. So I just run it back. There we go. Let's put some more in there. We like thyme. Okay, now fresh cracked pepper. And then we're going to put them out onto a sheet pan and into the oven. Got the oven set at about 375 degrees. Not too hot, but not too cold. If we blast it into a hot, super hot oven, they would, uh, they would burn before the center would finish cooking. Lay them out, make sure we get all the goodies out of there. All right, let's tuck that away. Okay, key here, we want to get crispy, so we got to spread these out a little bit. We don't want them overlapped. If they're overlapping, they will just get soggy on the sides. So no touchy. There we go. Okay, perfect. Into the oven. There we are. Okay. Now the next piece we have, I got to go to the fridge. Our salmon. We're using sockeye salmon today. And you're gonna see just how gorgeous this stuff is. Love fresh Pacific salmon. Can't beat the stuff. Fresh, wild Pacific sockeye salmon. It's one of five different species that we have here on the Pacific coast. We have the Chinook, the pink salmon, one of my favorites. We got coho and chum salmon. So there's all five. Beautiful stuff. When you go to your fishmonger, um, get a gorgeous side like this and just ask them to pull the pin bones out. Normally there's like this really sort of sharp bone that runs right down the middle here. Kind of a pain in the butt to do at home yourself, so if you can get the guy to do it for you, that's great. The other thing we're going to do today, because we're doing a chopped salmon, which is a little bit different, we're actually going to skin this bad boy. But you can eat the skin. Salmon, uh, eating salmon skin is delicious, but you have to make sure to get all these little scales off. So we're going to skip that part today and actually take the skin right off. I got the trusty old filleting knife here. You want something with a little bit of flex, you can see it kind of bends a little bit in there, but it's not going to fold over on me. We're just going to take a little tick off the end here, and then we're just going to run our knife. I'm angling it slightly toward the cutting board, all right? And we're going to pour, sort of saw it all the way down. We're almost there. Look at that. Hey, I'm not doing a bad job, eh? I think I've uh, filleted a salmon or two in my day. All the way through, let's see how I did. This is always a telltale sign. Flip it over. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. You save that, dry it out, make a pair of boots or something like that. I mean, 
I wouldn't wear them because it's cruel to salmon, right? So, <laughs> okay, now we got this bit. What we're going to do is start cutting it into cubes, okay? We're just gonna use a little bit for today's episode. We're doing something really special with this salmon. I'm actually gonna wrap it in cedar and I'll show you what that looks like in just one quick second here. Okay, we got little belly bits. They can go in there, that's no worries, that's great. I'm gonna do just a little bit more here. Look at the color on it, hey, it's just stunning. Love wild Pacific salmon. Now I need a bowl. The bowl, throw our salmon in. There we go, and we're gonna season this with a really special ingredient called sumac. Now sumac is, uh, it's like a Middle Eastern spice, but what it really is is a berry. So it's this deep red berry that they use all over the Middle East. Um, it has this really unique flavor of sort of citrus, like it's really quite lemony, uh, a little bit tart, but just spectacular. So, and as we know, fish or seafood and, uh, and lemon kind of goes really, really well together. Added some salt, set this off to the side here. Chop up some chives, some nice fresh chives in there. That adds a little bit of that onion hint. And a little, little chef secret here, adds a bit of color too. And of course, fresh cracked pepper. And now we just want to mix it all together. You know, salmon really is just a wonderful fish. It's packed full of essential nutrients, omega-3s, just amazing for you in general. Great fish, great fish for healthfulness. We got these Caesar, cedar planks. Check this out. Ooh. So, coming from a uh, cedar tree, nice thing about cedar is it has these really, really long, straight fibers. You can see what we've done here. Just bent that one in half. What we're going to do is twist it around like that and we're gonna stuff that salmon right inside there. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our chopped wild Pacific salmon and crispy potato wedges and olive oil and sea salt asparagus. But first, right after the break, we're getting out of the kitchen. You'll wanna stick around for that. Down here at Ogden Point, looking for some amazing food, and we run into all these food trucks. We're pretty excited to be here. Liz from the Rolling Reef, how are you, Liz? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm fantastic, and I have a feeling I'm about to get a lot better here. That's right, you sure are. Excellent, excellent. So what can you tell me about your truck? Well, we got the Rolling Reef here down at Ogden. We've got uh, Caribbean street food, so we try and keep uh, some distinctive Caribbean cuisine on the menu, also with some local sort of well, North, North American inspired stuff on the menu to appease all the peoples Fun. with some Caribbean vibe. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, yeah. who doesn't like Caribbean food, right? I don't know. Well, uh, <laughs> feel like whipping something up for me? I sure do. Come on. Yeah, let's head back and check it out. Car looks great. Thank Jeez. you. Colorful. Yeah, you can see us a mile away. Out, doesn't it? As soon as I walked on the truck, Liz, the smells in here are phenomenal. Like, it's awesome. just, like, some spices and stuff going on. Can you tell me a little bit about, I mean, it's Caribbean cuisine, so, like, fill me in. Yeah, well, I mean, the truck, obviously, it's a limited menu, but we've got jerk and we've got curries, which is probably one of the, the smells you're getting. So yep. the jerk, our signature item here, the jerk chicken cocoa bun, or okay. tofu, for those that don't eat the meat. The jerk um, is a Jamaican marinade. Okay. Yes, so it's allspice, cloves, habanero pepper, soy nice. sauce, dark, rich, very aromatic. A little bit of spice with the habanero, but we don't make anything 911. We right. bring our own hot sauce if you want to make it hotter. Yeah, if somebody wants get to some flavor. spice it up, they can do that on their own. Absolutely. But yeah, you just make it nicely balanced. Heck. Exactly, yeah. Awesome, yeah. Well, and again, the smells are incredible. Um, looks like you've got some chicken already prepared here, yep. so it kind of been marinating and then it finishes, so you grill it first. We marinate it for at least 24 hours, okay. and then we grill it. Right. And then we also add some of our jerk sauce to it, just to sort of amp up that jerk flavor. Delicious. I mean, that's the amazing thing about Caribbean cuisine too, right? Is that it has all that depth of flavor and so on. Absolutely. Very nice. Okay, Absolutely. so now here we have... This is a coconut bun, or a cocoa bun as we like to call it. So we make our own cocoa buns. Cool. It's your basic bread recipe, except we are using coconut milk. Oh, nice. As, okay. Uh, to add a little sweet to it. It's nice and fluffy and dense. It looks phenomenal, A little phenomenal, sweet yeah. with the spice of the jerk and the salt. The sweet bun and the coleslaw, which has a little vinegar. Nice. The flavor combo is a knockout winner. Oh, man. yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, let's build it together here and see let's how it goes. I got the bun all ready to rumble. And is that like a, a mayonnaise that on the inside? That is sour or? cream. Oh, sour yes. cream. Yes. Very nice. And then you put a little beautiful chicken right on there. Oh, that looks Look at that. Maybe a little bit more for you. What do you think? Well, I didn't really say no to, you know, jerk. There you go. That's great. And that, my dear. I will put a little bit of jerk sauce on there. Oh yes, please. Because why not? Absolutely. So, so like I said, yeah. There, well, we're all ready for the big push down here today. Say, yeah, you're all set and ready to go for service. Yep. And that's the key to these food trucks. Right? You have to be prepared and ready to go. And that 
oh, is man. your jerk chicken cocoa you bun. are torturing me right now by, <laughs> by keeping that away from me. I'm going to have a big old bite. Might be hot. Way. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm kind of getting... Kind of getting used to the big hot bites here. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. fair enough. And sloppy. Uh -huh. Get in there. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I don't know where to describe. <laughs> so many flavors. Mm. The jerk sauce is phenomenal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. I'm going in for a second. No, you bite. may as well. Uh -huh. You may as well. We might have to make one for all the crew. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not getting any of this one. No. <laughs> mm. Delicious. So good, Liz. Well, I need some napkins, huh? I do, Bob. Well, they're looking good. There you go. We, it? We've had a fellow at one of our events have four of these in a row. What? Yeah, that's how much he loved it. Sounds like a challenge. Well, <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Liz, for inviting me on your Thank truck. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Phenomenal. Can't wait to finish this guy off. Awesome. Number one. There you go. to our kitchen. We're working on chopped wild Pacific salmon with crispy potato wedges and olive oil and sea salt asparagus. And I'd like to get a few things started here before I show you how to finish off the salmon sort of presentation that I have here. Asparagus. Asparagus is an amazing vegetable, one of my favorites. It's short growing season here uh, on the Pacific coast. Um, but the beauty, the funny thing is, is it actually takes three years before you get harvest from seed to actual plant. So it's got to be in the ground for three years before you actually get these little beauties. Don't just take a knife and start hacking away at the bottom. There's actually a natural method of doing it that will maximize the, uh, the stalk length. So you kind of hold it by the end and by the tip with your full hand and just give it a snap. And it's gonna break exactly where it's the most tender. See that? I'll show you again here, because that was pretty, uh, pretty spectacular stuff. Hey, Harry Houdini had nothing on me. Check this out, okay, so, boom. All right, we're gonna put these right in a pan with some water. Just a little bit of water very simply and we're going to turn up the heat and let that sort of simmer away here almost almost at a boil we really want to get some steam and some movement going on in that pan now let's turn our attention to the salmon okay so i know at the end of the last segment there it was getting a little hectic I had to throw together this bad boy really quickly so i'm going to slow it down and just show you what i did here so it's a really thinly sliced piece of cedar and um, they're becoming more and more popular so you're going to see these things popping up at like specialty cookware stores and so on and so forth but again, because their fibers are so straight and long, they're very easily malleable. So we just turn it like that, and we grab some butcher's twine, wrap it around. We're just making a little cup to put our, uh, put our salmon in here. Now, cedar and salmon go hand in hand. Just, uh, it's just like, I don't know what it is. It's quintessential West Coast cuisine, if you ask me. This, these two flavors, smoking with cedar, cooking salmon on cedar planks, we're just taking it to another level here with our, uh, with our, with our fun culinary techniques. And now we're just gonna start stuffing our salmon into these little cups here. All right, now what this is gonna do is it's really gonna impart salmon flavor or cedar flavor into our salmon. When this starts cooking, it should actually start to smell like a sauna in your house. Personally, I think that's a good thing. There we go. Okay, really pack it in there, nice and tight. All that sumac, beautiful red color from the sockeye salmon. And then we got some of those chives in there. It's gonna be a pretty spectacular presentation when we pull this one all together. Okay, pack down. My hand's a little, uh, little wipe here. And then we're gonna crank up our cast iron pan. We want a nice heat, probably, you know, medium high here. We're definitely gonna to wanna to get a bit of a sear on these guys. Vegetable oil, very important to use a high smoking oil here. We don't want to use olive oil, it'll just burn. So vegetable oil like grapeseed or canola, something like that. I'm using a cast iron pan because it distributes heat really, really well. Okay, turn, toss it around a little bit in there. See my asparagus is coming along nicely. Don't forget about it, okay? So every now and again, just give it a little turn. Look at the color, how it's changed. See how it's already going that bright green? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff, beautiful spears. Okay, want a nice heat. Let's see, are we gonna get both pieces in there? I certainly hope so. And let's try it out. Now I'm using a fish spatula just so it doesn't fall out the other side. Ah, yes. There we go. And the next one, right down in beside it. And tuck that plate out of the way. 
Okay, we're gonna give it a quick sear on that side just to start firming up the flesh. Uh, it'll start releasing the flavors of the cedar. The sumac will start all blending together. We'll flip it over and we'll pop it in the oven. I can already start to smell, actually. I can already start to smell that salmon cooking with the sumac. Really, really neat stuff. Okay. Toss our asparagus with a little touch here. All coming together. Now it won't take long, and salmon is one of those fish that you can definitely eat like a little bit underdone, right? You don't want to cook it too well done. It starts to taste like the stuff you get out of the tin that you gotta add a ton of mayonnaise to. This one here, you want to kind of medium rare to medium, but definitely don't go any higher than medium, okay? Now, this is gonna be the tricky part right here. Let's see if we can get a spatula under there. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna happen. But we'll give it a whirl, hey? Where there's a will, there's a way. All right. Look at that. See how we got some really nice color in there? Hope you're getting that camera for you. better be on that one. Because here we go again. You ready? Look at that. <laughs> Man, I don't know, I'm pretty impressed with myself right now, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, look, look at that, so nice color. We got a bit of char. Again, that's the importance of this sort of pan here because it really holds the heat and, even, and evenly distributes it. So this stage, I'm gonna pop this in the oven and check on our potatoes because we're just about ready to go to the plate here, okay? go. Now because of the magic of television, of course, there has to be a little bit of fancy stuff going on. I got potatoes pre-done in here. There we go. Look at those guys. Nice and crispy. You can hear it as they turn on the pan. A nice glow to them. Beautiful golden brown color. Smells like a potato chip factory in here right now. Love it. A sauna and a potato chip factory. <laughs> this couldn't be, couldn't, couldn't be better. Let's fire some of these potatoes on our plate right here. I'm just gonna get that pepper out of the way. All right. See the thyme got all nicely roasted in there. Beautiful. Crispy. Man, I can't wait to dig into these guys. There we go. Move that out of the way. And let's have a look at our asparagus. So ideally what we'll do here is let most of that water just sort of uh, completely evaporate. And by that time, our asparagus should be cooked. Don't just go by that as a rule of thumb though. I mean, if you just let it go and you maybe had 10 cups of water in here, your asparagus would be totally overcooked before you had a chance to uh, uh, evaporate all the water. Well, this is feeling pretty good. We definitely want a bit of a crunch. Mm, not quite. A little bit longer. You know, China is actually the largest producer of asparagus in the world, followed a close second by Peru, and then Germany. I mean, who would have thought, right? Germany. <laughs> There you go. If you can find local asparagus, please use it. It's always, always best, local and fresh, right? Here we go. Really starting to come together nicely. You can see the water's almost fully evaporated, which is great. I think this is gonna be just, I think we had just the right amount of water in there. At this stage, I'm gonna add some lovely olive oil. Use a high quality olive oil. It's not for cooking per se, it's for flavoring. We really wanna flavor it afterwards. And then I have some sea salt here. You'll notice I have it kept in a sealed container. Really important stuff because you want that to, you don't want um, the moisture in the air to get at your salt. It'll start clumping it up and it'll make it uh, not nearly as potent and fresh. So just some lovely sea salt right over top. Nice big flakes. In it goes. And a little swirl around here. And then I'm gonna get a few of those spears right onto the plate. Over to the plate we go. Two, three, maybe we're feeling generous and we'll go with five. A little rule of thumb in plating. This is a restaurant rule of thumb they teach you in school. Never even numbers when it comes to plating food. You always want to put threes, fives, sevens on the plate. Um, one, of course, works, as you're going to see with our salmon. All right, so the salmon's been in the oven for probably about nine to ten minutes now. So it should be at a perfect sort of medium uh, color. Let's go grab it, see how we're doing. Oh yeah, beauty, beauty. Smells incredible. And I just want to show you something. This is how you can sort of tell you're getting to that medium, medium look. Um, whoever's got the best camera angle, let's have a look at this and see. You see how the sort of uh, the white color is starting to come out there? That means that it's starting to cook all the way through. You can really tell that the, uh, the, the, the sort of proteins are coming out. That's exactly what we're looking for, okay? So let's grab one out of here. Oh, I was going to be brave and use my tongs, but Let's use this guy instead. Get this guy out of here. 
Man, it smells incredible. Look at that. Got that cedar smell, beautiful color of the sockeye salmon, that vibrant green from the uh, vibrant green from the asparagus. Just love it. Finish with a little bit more of this gorgeous sea salt. Touch on the salmon. And here's a, here's a kitchen trick just to kind of spice it up a little bit. Add a little sumac and a line right here. And now you're plating dishes like a chef. There you have it. Chopped wild Pacific salmon with crispy potato wedges, and olive oil and sea salt asparagus. It's gonna be one heck of a dish. Now what better way to enjoy this amazing dish than with a delicious beverage? With me today is Chloe from Townside Brewing. Hey Chloe, how are Hi, you? Hi Garrett, good, how are you? Nice to see you. Thanks, so today I brought with us my uh, Belgian triple, the Charleston Belgian triple. Uh, when you work in our industry, people like to ask you, what's your favorite beer? And people tend to not like to answer that question, like where Fair am enough. I, what yeah. am I doing, is my hair in curlers? <laughs> um, I get that all the time. But not me, <laughs> I, uh, I don't have that problem. Um, there's a monastery in Belgium that makes a triple, uh, she made it's the white label and it is my favorite beer cool. on the yeah. planet. Classic yeah. old school beer, right? Yeah, From exactly. Yeah, and so, so this is our version. All right, so close second then. Close second, exactly. Well, I can't wait exactly. to try it. So, uh, and, and this ties together nicely with this dish here. I mean, salmon and beer, sometimes people might be a little sort of you know, freaked out by Hesitant. that. Hesitant, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. So we call this the white wine of beer. It's 9% alcohol. Uh, there's a lot of carbonation in there. Um, and there is actually quite um, a, a distinct top character as well. Okay. Uh, so I like to pair it with poultry and fish and anything really, because it's well, my favorite. This Hopefully this works really well. There's a little bit of citrus notes in there from the sumac, and then salmon, of course, is that nice rich flavor. So yeah. Let's, let's uh, give it Cheers. a taste. Cheers. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Mm. Mm, isn't that lovely? You're right, and sometimes with those big, you know, nine percent big hefty beers, you get that alcohol, and it's the not. The booze in over can overshadow. I'm our, scared of this beer. Yeah, our brewmaster hides alcohol very well, so watch I your step. Probably drink a lot of these. <laughs> hmm. Let's try Let's some of this here, yeah. salmon. That's yeah, perfectly oh, looks cooked delicious. in the center. Looks good. Mmm. Mm. A little bit of that citrus. The salmon really comes through. Nice, right? delicate flavors. Mm -hmm. Works for me. Yeah, and you nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely right. Good job. If you guys are trying this recipe at home, go look for this Charleston Triple from Townside Brewing. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. All right, let's dig in. Make sure you try that asparagus. Mmm, delicious. <laughs>